Today on The Joy of Editing, it's part two of the Skyline Full Edit, so please stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. It is TK Friday, my favorite day of the week, and I hope it is yours too. And today is part two of the Skyline Full Edit. The image comes to us by Marcelo DiVincenzi. And again, I apologize if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Marcelo. And as always, you can download the image and the PDF notes and give this edit a try out for yourself. Now, if you watched last week, part one, you may have already downloaded the image. Last week, I had the first five steps in PDF notes. Today, I'll have the entire set of all the PDF notes that you can download. You'll find Dropbox links in the description below this video, and you have to click on more to open up description or you don't see the description. Scroll down through the description and you will find the image and PDF Dropbox links. Hey, and if you have an image you'd like me to edit on a TK Friday, uh, please scroll down further and you'll find a contact me link. Click on that link and contact me and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. Right now over at the TK Web Store, there's a launch sale going on right now, 25% off everything. This sale lasts the whole month of February 2024. It ends on the last day of the month. If you use my promo code DK15 during this launch sale, that will give you 25% off anything you purchase, training videos, as well as the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. So DK15 gets you 25% off. And by the way, this launch is all about Sean Bagshaw's new complete workflow video, Iceland Highlands. There's over three hours of instructions and you get practice images. It's a really great video. Sean gets into blending multiple images for light and composition. Pretty cool stuff when you use my promo code dk15 not only do you get 25 percent off but you are supporting the joy of editing with dave kelly and for that i thank you now let's go ahead and finish this edit we're starting out at step six in the pdf notes and we're going to start off with a tk action i love the tk actions now you'll find a tk button on your combo or cx panel my actions are already open on my cx panel so click tk and that'll open up your actions now to close your actions you would click the x but you want to leave them open mine are already opened up on the cx panel i keep them opened all the time here i use two panels one for buttons and the other for actions if you want to keep your actions open because after you run an action the actions will close come up to the hamburger menu if you want to keep them open see where it says auto close tk actions click on that and uncheck it and then if it's unchecked they'll stay open for you that's just a little tip in this section here called color what we're going to do is click on soft pop one of my favorite actions and by the way if you hold your alt or option key down you can see what soft pop does it adds a subtle pop to the image by enhancing contrast saturation and sharpness so three things all in one action pretty nice and again holding option or alt down you can hover over anything here okay in this panel and that goes for all the panels if i'm in the multi mask panel if i hold the alt or option down we can see what all these different buttons do. Now, to get rid of the note, just click the X, okay? And over here, to get rid of the note, I would click the X. Right now, I have soft pop over the entire image, but I'm thinking I just want it on the skyline buildings in the foreground. So here's what we can do. Now, last week, if you followed along and you're doing the edit with me, you should have a sky, a foreground, and a water mask saved out as channels so here's what i'll do we're going to use the mass calculator so i need to make two calculations hold your command or control key down and click on the mass calculator that'll keep it open because every time you make a calculation this will self-close but if you hold your command or control key down and click on that layer mass calculator button it stays open until you click on this x to close it now i only want the foreground skyline but i don't want the water so what we'll do first is click on foreground and click this button right here that applies it as a mask but I don't want the water right now if you look at the mask the water is included so what we can do now is click on water and what do you think we can do to get rid of the water well yes we can subtract it so click the minus button and now that water is subtracted out and now if I shut off this layer by clicking the eye there's the before and now here is the after and you'll notice it's only on the buildings, so that's pretty nice now I think it's a little too strong so if you click right here or if you hover over here you see that little hand comes up and you can 
I can adjust this to the right or left. That's the layer opacity. Or if you want to see it, and sometimes for a video, I probably should show it this way. Click this little drop down and a slider pops up. And you can come and drag across here. And I'm just going to take this back to like 70%. Now let me shut it off. Here's the before and here's the after. And I think that looks good. So what is next, you may ask? I thought I would darken all the really darker shadow tones to add a little bit of dark contrast to this image here. And I think it'll really help the image to pop some more. So here's what we're going to do. Now I don't need this mask calculator right now, so I can click this X to close it because it'll stay open until you click that X. We're going to grab a curves adjustment layer. So we'll click on this button right here. I'm going to click on this button to go into edit blend if. I know that dark shadows are going to be hitting around, you know, four or five or six, possibly three. Let's start out at three. So let me click the three button. Now nothing has changed here because what I want to do next is use a darkening blend mode to just hit those shadows. And I love Edit Blend If because it lets us target just certain luminosity values. So what we're going to do is click this button on the combo or multi-mask panel, MUL for multiply, which darkens. And check it out, we have all those tones darkened down. And now we can play around here. So I'm starting out at three. So let's go to four, because I think I'm getting too dark right here. Let me shut this layer off by clicking the eyeball. That's before, that's after. Now it's not doing anything to the sky because there are no really dark tones up there in the sky. So let's try four, let's narrow this down. There's four, see how it's narrowing down? And now let's try five. Okay, I like five. Let me shut this off. There's before and there is after. But see how that really makes the image pop? It's giving us more contrast in the darker shadows. Now, I felt that was a little too much, so let me click right here on opacity, and I brought mine down to like 80%. Let's shut this layer off by clicking the eye. There's before and there's the after, but see that nice little bit of a contrast pop in the dark shadows? I really like it. If you want to see where those dark tones are at, you can click this double magenta arrow and you can see these are the areas we're hitting, the magenta areas. Do you see that? See, it's not touching anything in the water and I do not have a mask on here just targeting the skyline buildings, but it's not hitting the water. It's just hitting all the areas where you see the magenta. So let me go ahead and click this button again and shut it off. But that's a really nice way to see what you are targeting. And by the way, if I Let's turn it back on again. So if I go to one, you can see how broad it gets, right? Here's two, here's three, here's four. And notice this slider right here on the highlights. It's moving to the right as I go to the right here. But as I go to the left, you can see it's moving over. So if I go to four, and you could fine tune, like I could pull this over a little bit like this and kind of watch what I'm targeting right there. You see, that's pretty cool, right? You know, or you could hit the buttons here, but you can fine tune here as well. I love it at Blend If. But let me go back and I'm just going to click on five. And, I, you know, I was almost right where I needed to be. So let me click this button right here. Again, let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after, and I think that's really nice. By the way, when I was just saying these numbers here, these are darks, darks one, darks two, darks three, four, and five. These are midtones one, midtones two, midtones three, and these are lights one, lights two, lights three, and so on and so forth. But the thing I love about Edit Blend If is you can see in real time what's happening, whether you go to lights one, lights two, or darks one, darks two you see the immediate response, which really makes it really nice and convenient when you're editing. And by the way, for Edit Blend If, you see right here where it says gray, this little checkbox. If I uncheck it, you can see what it looks like without the Edit Blend If. It would look like that. Pretty horrible, right? But here's what it looks like after Blend If tames it down. I especially love Edit Blend If for burning, which is darkening shadows, and dodging, which is lightening highlights. The TK9 Multi Mask Panel makes Blend If really easy to use, which is one of the things I love about TK9. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, it's time to darken the sky or close it off as I like to call it. I always think an image like this, a skyline, looks nice when you have a little bit of darkness up here at the top and also at the bottom. I call that, you know, closing off the top, closing off the bottom, just to keep our viewer into the area that we want them to be, just to keep their eyes from wandering out of the frame. I don't need the Edit Blend If panel now, so we can click the X. Nothing changes anywhere for any Blend If layers. And what we can do at this point is, let's use another Curves adjustment. This is what I like to do when I want to darken something, because I'll use a Blend Mode. 
I'm going to use this button right here on the combo panel, which when I click it puts a black mask on the curves layer just to hide anything that I'm doing. And then I like to darken by using the multiply blend mode. It's great for doing these closing off of skies. And now the new live gradient tool, we're going to click this button right here. And what you want to make sure is you're on gradient, not classic gradient. That would be the live gradient, just gradient. And then if you look right here, this is a drop down. If you're not seeing the gradient that I have, click on the drop down and go to basics. Click right here on this little arrow and click the last button right here. And also make sure you have it on reverse. Make sure reverse is checked on because look right up here. If I uncheck reverse, now it's black to white. But if I click on reverse, it is white to black. And that is what you want. And as you can see, my cursor is a crosshatch. I'm going to come right here, click, and I'm going to drag down. And to keep this straight, hold your shift key down and it'll constrain it. You see that? I'm holding that shift key down and I'm going to come down to about right about here. And then you see this little diamond? We can adjust this. You see that? And I want to close it off to maybe right around this area right here. Now, if you don't want to see the gradient line, just click on the curve icon and that'll go away. When you click on the mask, you'll see it again. So you could go back and readjust it. So I'm going to click on the curve icon. Let me shut this layer off by clicking the eye. There's before and there's the after. But if you'll notice, it is getting down into these buildings here. But we can take care of that because we have a layer mask calculator. So let's click this. And I happen to have a foreground mask. So let's click on foreground and let's click the minus button and we'll subtract that out. And now it's going off of the buildings. Pretty cool. And if we look at our mask, we can click the double arrow and see the mask and see how it's protecting the buildings. Click this again and we can see the image. And again, I'm going to click on the curve icon and we'll see that. Now, I think that's too strong. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to click here and I'm going to start to drag this back a little bit, the opacity. And I think right here at 75% should be good. So let me shut this layer off again. Here's before and here's after. But see how that closes off the top, keeps us into the frame. Now, we got to close off the bottom next. Now, just like the sky, we're going to come and add a curves adjustment layer by clicking this button on the multi mask panel. Click the black button right here to put a black hide all mask on this. Now we need a multiply blend mode. We can click this button on the combo panel or CX panel. Nothing changes because of that black mask. It's hiding what we're doing. And now we can click on the gradient tool. Well, we're already on it, but I'm just going to click it anyway. See my crosshatch here. And again, make sure we're set up for gradient and make sure you have white to black. It should still be there because you just set it that way. So nothing should have changed. And also, by the way, make sure you're using this first button. Make sure you've clicked on that for linear gradient because these are different gradients like that's radial, that's angle, that is reflected, and this is diamond gradient. So now you see my cursor here for the gradient. I'm going to click right here and drag up again. I'm going to hold that shift key down to constrain it. And I'm going to come up to maybe right about here and then release the left click of my mouse. And now we have this diamond that we can kind of adjust this how we'd like it. And I think maybe somewhere right about there should do it. Now, if we don't want to see this line again, remember, you can click right here. Let's shut this layer off. I'll click the eye. This is before and this is after. And that's way too dark. So again, I'm going to click right here and I'm going to start to pull back on the opacity and stop at a place where I think it looks right. And I think like right here at 60%. So let me shut this layer off by clicking the eye. Here is the before and here's the after. And I like it. Now my top and bottom are closed off, keeping my viewer right into the frame. Now, just a little point of interest. You see this layer right here where I closed off the sky. Let me shut this off just to verify. There is the sky, right? And I still have my gradient that I could adjust here this live gradient. However, if I readjust this, I will lose the foreground subtraction from this mask. So I'd have to go ahead and resubtract out the foreground if I readjusted. And now moving on to the next adjustment, I've been having so much fun with the Orton effect in the last couple of edits I've done on TK Fridays. I thought I'd add the Orton effect just to the skyline buildings in the foreground. And we have our choice of three different Orton effects in the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. I'm just going to use the basic Orton effect. I really like it a lot. Now you'll find the Orton effects in your TK actions. If your actions aren't open, click on this button and you're gonna find uh, Smart Orton and Orton Effect. Now, I just made a video a few videos back. You may want to check that out 
on the different Orton effects, how they all work, and some tips and tricks. It's a really good video, in my opinion. I think you'll enjoy it. If you haven't seen it yet, you may want to go back and watch it. So we're going to click on this button right here, Orton Effect. A Gaussian Blur dialog comes up, and I'm going to accept the radius for the pixels just the way it is for Gaussian Blur. I'll click OK. Now that's like a super strong effect. As you recall, I only want to apply the effect to the foreground skyline. So what we'll do is command or control click on the mass calculator to keep it open because I'll make a couple calculations. First thing I want to do is click on foreground and apply the foreground. And right there we can see it's not in the sky. But the other thing I want to do is I don't want the water, so we'll click on water and we will click the minus and we'll subtract out the water. Now it's only on the buildings. And I know it doesn't look right, okay, but we're going to take care of that. I'm not using the Orton effect just for like an ethereal look. What I'm trying to do is just tame the digital look on the buildings and make them look a little more photographic. So what I'll do is on this Orton effect group layer, the opacity, I'm just going to click right here and highlight this and type in 1.5 for 15%. Now let me shut this layer off. Here's before and here's after. Again, before and after. See how it just tones down that digital look a little bit? It just looks a little more photographic, and I like it. I don't need the mask calculator, so I'll click the X to close it. And we're almost done. A couple more steps and we'll be done. The next thing I want to do is increase the overall exposure a little bit. So to do that, we're going to click on this button on the multi mass panel. This gives us an exposure adjustment layer. But you notice anytime you have a group open, it's going to put it inside the group. I could have closed the group first and I should have. But if this happens, no big deal. Just left click and drag up out of the group like that. You see that? And now it's out. But let me show you what I should have done if I had a group open that I wanted to keep open. Let me delete this layer by clicking this trash can. When you have an active layer and you click the trash can, you trash the entire layer. What I should have done was held down the command or control key while clicking this exposure button. It'll place that adjustment layer above the group and not inside it. And that holds true for any of these adjustment layer buttons. And now what I want to do is just increase that exposure a little bit. So come up to the exposure slider, click right here and make this active. You see that zero, zero, zero is in blue. Hold down your shift key, click your up arrow. You'll go up one tenth of a stop. You see that? That's one tenth of a stop. Let me click it again. Here's two tenths of a stop. And one more time, three tenths of a stop. Now I like to do it this way by highlighting exposure, the number holding the shift and arrowing up one tenth of a stop at a time, because if you use the slider, this can get out of hand really quickly. And I find that going up a tenth of a stop at a time is the best way to get the adjustment that you're looking for. And I usually find that I never need more than a half of a stop. And so going up by tenths is the way to go. And it helps you to just pinpoint the exposure level that you need. And now I just want to make sure that my Highlights are not getting too much adjustment. So what I'm going to do is click on Edit Blend If. And what I found out by experimenting, I tried a No Lights 1 and then a No Lights 2. And I felt a No Lights 2 was getting it. So let me shut this exposure adjustment off by clicking the eye. Here's before and here's after. Now let me shut off the Edit Blend If by clicking this button right here next to gray, this checkbox. This is without Edit Blend If and this is with. If you look at this building right here, it gets tamed down a little bit. Again, this is without, and this is with. And I think that really helps. One final adjustment, and we are done. I need to get back to my multi mass panel, and right now the Edit Blend If panel is in the way, so I'll click the X to close. And again, nothing ever changes here. What I'm going to do, I'm just looking at the saturation of the image. I'm just looking for overly saturated colors. And the best way to do that is come right here and use the saturation vibrance mask. Click this button right here. If you're looking for oversaturated colors, you want to use saturation. If you're looking for weaker color, you want to use vibrance masks. And I find most of the time that a saturation one, which it defaults at, is the one I'm going to use. Now you see all these lighter areas like right in here. That's my most saturated color right in there. And that is that red ship, I believe. And you also have this double arrow button here. You can always click this and you can see, yep, that's that red in there or reddish orange. 
click this button again, we go back to the mask. And usually saturation one is the one that gets it for me. So I'm just going to use that. And I'll output that to a hue sat adjustment layer. So I'll click this button right here. And that'll apply that mask to the hue sat adjustment layer or the hue saturation adjustment layer, whichever you prefer. But let's go ahead and make an adjustment. I think my blues are a little too strong, so I'm just gonna come up here to master and click on blues, just to target the blue color. And I'm just gonna pull that back. And it's only targeting blues. And I'm gonna take it back to right there, minus 14. And now for the reds, I'm gonna click on, obviously, reds. And let's pull back on that red saturation. And I'm gonna take that back to right there, minus 27. And now let's go to master. So let's click the drop down, click on master, and that would be all the color. And again, it's only targeting the most saturated colors. And let me show you something here. If I take this saturation slider and pull it the whole way off, you notice I don't lose all the color, right? Because of that mask. And all I wanna do is take a little bit of the master saturation off. So I'm gonna take it back to right there, minus 17. Now let me shut this layer off. So here's before the saturation adjustment and here is after. And I like it. And now at this point, we are done. So let's take a look at where we started from. So on my combo panel, I'll click the before after button. That's this button right here. We started out here and now we end up here. And I'm really happy with this result. Well, there it is, everyone. This was part two of a two-part series, a full edit of a skyline image. I really enjoyed doing this edit today. And I hope you give it a try. And don't forget, there's a sale going on right now at Tony Kuiper's web store. Sean Bagshaw's latest video has just been released. Iceland Highlands Complete Workflow. Over three hours of teaching. And don't forget, use my promo code DK15. It'll get you 25% off. Not the normal 15%, but 25% off your entire purchase. And that sale ends the last day of February 2024. Hey, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like, share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification icon. Also click all so that you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. Well, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.